Hi and welcome to our COP28 interview series here in Dubai. I'm Laurie Gain. If the pandemic taught us anything, it's the importance of staying connected in a globalised world. But questions around data storage and the use of our internet do raise environmental concerns. So I'm delighted to interview our guest, Paula Kogan, CEO of EU Networks. Her company builds, operates and owns a fibre network service operating in 53 cities across 17 countries in Europe. So first day of COP, how are you feeling? I feel really excited, Laura. It's the first time that I've attended COP. Um, and frankly, it's a real privilege um, to be here. Definitely. Um, yeah, there's, um, there's a real atmosphere about the place, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, you know, I'm very, very keen to learn from other organisations in terms of the sustainability initiatives that other peer companies are focused on. Absolutely, there's a huge amount of private sector engagement this year, which is yes. really exciting. Yes. Um, yeah. have, what have you got on today after the interview? Um, well, I'm just going to have a wander around yeah. and um, you know, strike up some conversations. And again, you know, very much I'm here to learn and feel inspired by what organisations are doing to combat climate change and I'm hoping to take things back to our workplace that we can you know hopefully put in place. Absolutely I think there's a lot everyone here can learn especially there's quite a few uh, panel discussions that I'm excited to attend but should we head to the studio and we can Absolutely. chat about it more. Absolutely I'm looking forward to it. So welcome Paula could you tell us a little bit more about EU Networks and what the company does exactly? Yes absolutely so EU Networks are a provider of digital infrastructure to businesses predominantly across Europe. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, essentially, we are a specialist telecommunications company that provides high capacity connections predominantly into data centers for the world's most discerning consumers of bandwidth. And typically, they tend to be hyperscalers, media companies, other telecommunications companies, and also financial services companies. So I like to say to people, think about what EU Networks does as being the sort of motorway or the freeway or, or autobahn for the internet. Fantastic. Sounds like you've got a huge network there. Um, in, in your opinion, what do you think makes EU networks unique? So we do have a, a very, very large network across Europe. It spans 66,000 route kilometres. We operate metro or city networks in 17 key cities across Europe. Um, those networks are connected by a long haul backbone that spans 53 cities in 17 countries. Um, but essentially, we're quite a rare specialist in the industry. We don't have a large portfolio of services. We do specialise, as I said earlier, in providing high capacity connections into data centres. And we architect those with, with real precision. Some of our customers have very, very exacting standards. So, for example, they don't want a banking application to go down. They don't want social media or email to go down. So very often our clients ask us not just for two connections into a data center, but often three or four. And they ask us to design those to you know, very, very tight um, specifications. And I think the other thing that makes us unique in this industry is that we do build networks. We are very, very cognizant of the impact that building fiber networks has on the environment. Essentially, it's a dirty business. To build networks, you actually dig up the earth, you dig up the ground. Uh, but we do try and do that with sustainability in mind. And that, I think, does make us fairly unique in the industry. So you, you've just touched on uh, on my next question there. Um, in the industry, why, why, why is sustainability so important? Look, we are a, a responsible um, and ethical company. Uh, one of our core values at EU Networks is to make a positive impact on society and on the world and on the communities that we serve with our services. Um, the need for high capacity bandwidth will continue to grow. We've seen it grow. We've seen the, the demand for our services essentially double every year. And with the advancements in machine learning and AI, the demand for that internet connectivity is going to be exponential. And as I said earlier, you know, that can have an impact on the planet. Um, so one of the things that we are doing is, you know, increasingly looking at how we can construct networks 
uh, with sustainability in mind. You know, we are working with our own supply chain to identify recyclable materials. Uh, we are putting pressure on our supply chain to move to uh, renewable energy sources. You know, when you're constructing networks, it involves the use of very heavy plants and machinery often powered by diesel. So we are very, very mindful of collaborating with our own supply chain and partners to encourage them to think about the use of more sustainable energy sources and materials in the construction of our networks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, can you give any more details about what uh, EU Networks is doing to reduce its carbon footprint and also transition into a low carbon economy? Absolutely. So one of the things that we did a couple of years ago, Laura, is we sourced a sustainability linked loan. And that comes with some very high and hard key performance indicators around transitioning to renewable energy sources. It also comes with some metrics around creating gender diversity within our workforce. So there's a whole range of KPIs that is really encouraging my entire organization to focus on being a more sustainable company. Um, and one of the things that I'm very, very proud that we've done is we have sourced 98.8% of our own energy, our own electricity um, via renewable sources. So there's a little bit left to do, and that tends to be in our supply chain in buildings that we rent and don't own. So, you know, we managed to do that very, very quickly. Now we're here at COP28, but looking ahead to the future, what are the long-term sustainability goals that your company are looking at? And how does it plan to contribute to global efforts in combating climate change beyond the summit we're at today. Yes, so as I said earlier, you know, we're working and collaborating very closely with our own suppliers, um, with the broader industry to think about different ways to construct networks. So there are some new engineering and drilling techniques, for example, that, um, that we are looking at adopting. Um, and fairly recently, we built a subsea network, a cable um, under the sea. And one of the um, major impacts in, in terms of carbon emissions when you're building a subsea cable is around the very detailed surveys that have to be done. And this involves sending a very large survey vehicle out to sea. And typically they are crewed and they consume a lot of energy. One of the things that we did in our recent um, subsea cable construction is we sent out an uncrewed vehicle that was remotely powered actually from the shore um, and that had um, a consumption 20 times less than using a traditional crewed vehicle. So, you know, we are constantly challenging ourselves to innovate, uh, to collaborate with the wider um, industry and also to learn from our peer companies in terms of some of the innovations um, that they are um, deploying and implementing within their own organizations. Yes, some really fantastic um, innovations, like you said, going on there. So is there a final message you would like to leave with us today? Um, yes, there is. Um, look, climate change and moving to a low carbon economy, it's not just a political issue. It is a world issue. It is a business issue, but it is an individual issue for all, us all as consumers. Um, you know, we at EU Networks are absolutely committed to putting in place some tangible initiatives that will positively impact climate change. I think in business, there's often a temptation to think about a sustainability focus as a competitive advantage, but we shouldn't do that. There is a need for us all to unite as a society, as a planet, and as an industry, as a telecommunications in industry, uh, to share best practice and to ensure that we put some tangible initiatives in place and share learnings to ensure that we have a positive impact on the planet. So ever-growing demand for your services and some really important lessons there. I'm sure more people can learn uh, at the conference at day one. So thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome.